Now I'd like to open the meeting to the sharing of testimonies of healing through Christian science. Jeremy, go ahead. <clears throat> I am so grateful tonight for a healing that has happened since coming to this church. For as long as I can remember, I had trouble with bright lights, and it seemed that these times, seemed that with time, these started leading to migraines. I wore sunglasses as much as possible, and at times I even wore them driving at night because of the headlights. Since coming to the Plainfield Church and learning about Christian science, I no longer need to wear sunglasses. In fact, I can even drive into the setting sun now without any issues. What a freedom this is, and I am so grateful this heal for this healing, because for years it was a constant worry that I'd have to endure pain after being out during a beautiful day. Perhaps the most amazing part of this healing is that I didn't ask for it, nor was I waiting for it. This healing was simply an effect of the power of Christian science has had on my entire life. God blesses me every day in so many ways, and I am so grateful that with the teaching of Christian science that I am learning in this church and daily practitioner support, I am no longer blind to those blessings. Thank you. Thank you. Craig, go ahead. Thank you for those really, really uh, instructive and uh, heartfelt uh, readings. I, uh, I had a healing this week. I had a healing that uh, I wasn't trusting God enough. And my blood vessel burst in one of my eyes. That was the result. When you have things to do in life, you know, God is our life, and, and we need to, you know, visit his our knees or whatever, but continually, like Moses and Jesus, go to him to find out what to do and how to do it. And I prayed, but I don't think I, I just thought I was overwhelmed over my son having issues and uh, fractures the last couple of weeks, and then some internal bleeding, and then... Uh, just uh, a new job. Well, I should have been like Moses and I should have been like Jesus. In the lesson we hear, Moses went up into the mountain and he stayed for 40 days until he got his connection, I guess, and everything else they needed. And Jesus, we know, would go up before he healed and pray to God. And a practitioner told me, God's what's doing this. God takes your burden Please, those were her words. And him 49. And I realized I didn't need to give up these foolish ways. Dear Lord and Father of us all, forgive our foolish ways. We close in our rightful mind. Well, I feel stronger because I, I, I realize it's, I should never be ashamed to always be praying. You know, <laughs> you know it's a good thing. And I, I'm going to do more of it. And I feel like I want to be like a little child. It's a good place to be. I thank God and Mary Baker Ready for uh, humbling me some more. Thank you. And our practitioner here, one of them. Thank you. Yeah. Janet from Georgia, go ahead. Hi. Um, I too had a healing this week that I am so very grateful for. Sunday morning, I awoke to. Um, start my unity watch and I wasn't able to swallow. I felt something uh, in my left side of my throat seemed swollen. I guess it was a gland. But I had something more important to do, which was the unity watch. And I just, I didn't ignore it. But, you know, I've had problems in the past with um, a swollen gland every now and then. And I would I would get so upset about it, and I would feel fearful that I had to work this out and had to know a truth, et cetera, et cetera. This time was completely different because of the unity watch. I just said, I do not have time for this. I have something much more important to do. I started the watch, 
And I think halfway through it, the swelling had completely disappeared. There seemed to be some other uh, suggestions coming to me of chills, etc. But those two dissipated, and I was able to attend roundtable, and nothing, nothing was, um, was wrong after that. And in the past, I, I just would not have been so calm. I attribute it to this church because attending Plainfield has taught me so very much. I probably can't tell you everything this evening, but it is such a great calm feeling that I have when something does arise and, and I need to take care of it. It's not the fear I used to have before. And I know that this important work that we're all doing, these Unity Watches, is a great blessing, not only for the world which we are doing it for, but for ourselves. I am so grateful for the opportunity to do that, and I thank you so very much for providing those for everyone. It's such a pleasure and a joy to do it. I thank you all at Plainfield, and I thank you for the beautiful readings tonight for God, Jesus, and Mrs. Eddie. Thank you. Thank you. Linda from Pennsylvania, go ahead. Good evening. Uh, last Sunday we, at the roundtable discussion, it was, uh, there was a um, brought up about being aware of being around negative company and negative talk. Listening to this rem reminded me that I had much to be grateful for. At work especially, I was exposed to a lot of negative communication along the line of gossip, gloom and doom, dark humor, negative, uh, all negative. For months, with the support of a practitioner at Plainfield, I have been changing my own negative thoughts, old habits, and behaviors. I was learning the necessity of avoiding unhealthy interactions, and um, they always gave me more work and prayerful um, need for more prayerful work and to regain my peace and a connection with God, so they definitely were not worth it. I really wanted to use my thinking for God only and to bless the world more and more. I needed to get myself out of the way and let God work. Each situation, different answers would come. They were not always the same, and I realize now that there were different lessons to learn and different needs to meet. But one of my favorite um, working out was a, recent, a couple of weeks ago when I was out on my uh, just quietly standing around, unexpectedly I was approached by a person who had been a particular challenge to me with this negativity. I turned to God and did a quick watch. I had been for a while also working really hard to see her as God sees her. Just as she started to speak, we were suddenly interrupted by this joyous child, and that was the end of the conversation. Also, my hours have changed at work, which take me away from one of the trickiest spots of the day, and a cheerful, positive individual has joined our team. I have much to be grateful for. Uh, I'm so grateful for the support of the Plainfield practitioners. I'm grateful to God, to Mrs. Eddie, and to Jesus, and all the members at Plainfield. Thank you, and have a good evening. Thank you. Shahidat from Maryland, go ahead. Hello. About a year and a half ago, I had major surgery. It was an emergency situation, and while it appeared to have fixed one problem, it seemed to cause another that was brought to my attention shortly thereafter. During a follow-up visit earlier this year, I was told I would need another procedure to correct that new issue. And while I was assured that it was a a fairly routine thing, the thought of undergo, having to undergo another operation caused me considerable distress, so I, just, I delayed the procedure. But fear prevented me from addressing the issue head on. The negative thoughts were relentless and insisted that once I had gone down the medical route, that was my only option. But I knew I didn't have to accept that and that I could still stand on the truth. After all, the fruitish chapter in Science and Health is filled with people who have, for whatever reason, chosen the material medical path 
only to later see that it offered but a temporary solution. True freedom, freedom can only be found in God. I had talked to a practitioner in this church about another issue, and she wrote to me then that medical laws have no power to control God's idea, and that God's spiritual laws alone govern. More recently, she sent me an article by Peter Ross, which has been very helpful. In particular, it contained this prayer, Father, give me the glory I had with thee before this mesmerism enveloped me. So today I went for another follow-up appointment, and the doctor called to tell me that the second procedure was no longer necessary. The issue had been healed, and I was now out of the danger zone. The Bible says to resist the devil, and it will flee from you. And I am most thankful tonight for the practitioner, for her help, and for this church for showing me how to handle animal magnetism. Thank you so much. Thank you. Shardell from Pennsylvania, go ahead. Hello. Earlier this week, when I was tired and concerned about a family member who doesn't practice Christian science and requires constant care following surgery, I went to our website and was drawn to the forum, where I found the first two posts of the week about God's law being written in our hearts and also diligence. I was immediately flooded with great peace and comfort from the spiritual sincerity behind these written words. How very grateful I am for our fabulous website that teaches, heals, and comforts the world. I also must give thanks to our devoted practitioners and all the people who participate for Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. Thank you. Thank you. Florence. Florence from Georgia, go ahead. This is Day Day. Thank you. The Bible section of this week's lesson says, Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel neither seek the Lord. This reminds me of the importance of what I've learned about keeping God first and relying on Him rather than any material means for my well-being. Through the study of Christian science, I've given up my reliance on a job or on my bank account and learned that God provides me with all that I need. I've given up my reliance on medicine or a certain type of diet and realize that God is my health and my strength, and he governs my body harmoniously. And I now understand that I can't rely on any material safety methods or systems because God alone is my unfailing, ever-present protection. Each of these lessons I've learned through many personal struggles and challenges that resulted in great healings, which transformed my thoughts and increased my gratitude to God. I'm so grateful for Christian science, the Bible, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy, and to our Plainfield practitioners for all that I'm learning that is improving my life. Thank you so much for tonight's meeting and for tonight's readings. Thank you. Carol, go ahead. Um, A friend of mine at work used to work in the World Trade Center, and um, she uh, had a lot of very good friends there. And uh, when the 9-11 occurred, she lost a lot of good friends and a lot of co-workers. And every year on the anniversary, she has a really difficult time. Um, this This year, I was listening to the CD that Faith and Peter recorded. And when the words, rise above the mist you're in, when they sang that, just a a feeling flooded over me that she doesn't have to stay in that mist, that God doesn't put her in a mist, and that she has a right to rise above it, just like that song said. And I I just prayed with that for a little bit and, and went off to work, and she was fine. 
I was so amazed. She, she was just fine. It was a normal day. And at the end of the day, I said to her, you know, you really handled this very well today. And she said, yeah, I did, didn't I? She said, I don't know why, but it really was easier for me this year. Well, we all know why, because God stepped in in the middle of it, and he knew she deserved better than that. And I just am so grateful for Christian science and so grateful for all the wonderful things that we have here at church, including the music. It's very healing. And thank you so much, and very grateful for practitioner help. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, that all the things that I, my son is getting much better quickly, and and that mesmerism will pass for him in his eyes and everything will be perfectly formed. And my job is working out fine. And everything that was pressuring me is disappearing in his rightful place. Thank you. Lillian, go ahead. I'm so grateful for what I've learned about who I am and that has saved my life. I came here feeling very uncomfortable around people and uneasy with changing situations. Well, that all changed learning to trust God in all that I do. At one point when I was working a full-time permanent job, my company had a downsizing, but I took retirement. I decided to keep working in several agencies, temporary agencies, getting many temporary jobs over many years, and it all worked out so well. I met all the challenges thanks to God and practitioner help. I'm just so grateful that God brought me here to give me this new life, and for all that I've learned through classes, teaching, practitioner help about God and who I am. And I'm grateful for the readings tonight. Thank you. Gary, go ahead. I've had many uh, life-changing lessons uh, as a result of learning about Christian science uh, in, this, in this church. And one of the lessons uh, that I've been grateful for tonight that I'd like to uh, share is um, a lesson on how to deal with pressure. Now this may seem a little strange, but for me this was really a life-changing uh, and, and wonderful lesson. When I first came to Plainfield many years ago, I was always very quick to give in to other people pressuring me. I uh, always wanted to please them, and I was constantly doing things under pressure, feeling pressured. And I never felt, I mean, I always felt yucky about it because I often ended up doing things that in hindsight didn't really need to be done. And I often made lots of mistakes in doing these things where I had to retrace my steps and start all over. And I'm grateful that there was a practitioner in this church at the time who saw that and was able to help me see that I don't ever need to give in to that kind of pressure. And in fact, I'd better not give in to that kind of pressure if I want to be of any use to God. The, there's a statement in Science and Health that she gave me that states, the angel visitant comes in the quiet of meekness. And I worked to keep my thought quiet and listening for God more and more. And that has made a huge difference in my life, for which I'm very grateful. And then there is, in our textbook, one statement in the entire textbook that has the word pressure in it. And that statement goes, Christian scientists must live under the constant pressure 
of the apostolic command to come out from the material world and be separate. So there is a kind of pressure that we really do have to accept and live under. The pressure to come out from the material world and be separate. So I'm learning that when I feel pressure, I stop and ask God, is this pressure to come out from the material world and get closer to God? Or is this pressure to fall deeper into the material world and away from God? And if it's the latter, I'm learning to say no. Just say no. And if it's the former, I'm learning to say yes and be obedient to it. I'm grateful that I don't succumb to the wrong kinds of pressures so often, that I don't make as many mistakes as a result of that, and I do more of the things that really do in fact need to be done, and I'm so grateful to be learning that in Christian science in this church. Thank you. Tom from Iowa. Tom from Iowa, go ahead. I'm grateful to be here tonight. I just recently started a new job, and it's a lot of physical labor, and my concern while working there has been to still be aware of God and His presence even while I was working. Sometimes I felt void, though I knew He's really always there, and I noticed I wasn't praying enough while working or being grateful and thanking God for His provision for me, and that all be blessed there in this workplace. I thank God and Plainfield for the excellent teaching that comes through this church, also, I'm grateful for practitioner help I've been receiving, and to Mary Baker Eddy for giving us Christian science. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this is Bruce, and um, I'm grateful that God speaks to us. Lately, I've been getting this message that Mrs. Eddy gave us that progress is God's law. The thing is, this message keep on coming back to me. So I said, okay, I was been thinking about progress in the light of, you know, getting better and improving, but yet this message kept on coming. So I turned to our dictionary to find, look up the definition of progress, and it starts out by saying, a moving or going forward, a proceeding onward. So, with that, I said, okay, Father, why am I getting this message? And I looked within, and I just realized how many times I kept on looking into the back, into the past, rather. Like thinking, oh, wouldn't have things worked out much better if I'd only had done such and such at such a time in my life. And I realized that in this sense of progress, I got to stop doing that. That I got to do like this definition says, to go forward and proceed onward and stop going through life looking in the rearview mirror. And then the next thing that happened was that we had our grandchildren over at our house and I noticed by watching them how keen they were to look forward to what's next. They were always looking forward. They had a keen relish and a joy for thinking of what's coming next and looking forward to finding out what it was and doing it. They were always looking forward. So that was, gave me the great example of the childlikeness that Jesus loved and that I needed to preserve in my way of going about things. So I made a determined effort to stop thinking about things, whatever they was and way back when, because it doesn't really matter anyway, but to have a keen relish for what's next and progress onward to it and it's made my life much happier. I'm very thankful for Christian science and everything Mary Baker Eddy gave us. And just to know we've got a really good God to guide us, that's a wonderful thing to know. Florence, Florence from Georgia, go ahead. Thank you. I'm grateful for something I came across in my readings this week. It was from 
precept 3, on page 238, it says, Demonstration calls for a daily realization that God is the source of all good, and that that good comes to one through the channels God appoints. Demonstration means establishing God as the source of all good and having faith that God will raise up channels through which that good will come to man to meet his every need. I know that before I understood the importance of wanting only God's will done in my life, I used to outline how I wanted things to unfold. I would declare the truth and bypass the exercise of faith and patience that would allow things to unfold in God's way. At one time, I was looking for employment, and even though I prayed about it, I was still limiting my capabilities because I was basing what I could do on my past work experience. I went into something I was familiar with, and of course it did not last. When I learned to just trust God with the outcome of all my needs, a phone call came, and within a short time, I had employment that gave me more money, plus the valuable experiences that impact my work today. This has taught me the lesson to spend most of my time trusting God, looking to Him in every need and expecting good, however he may bring it into my life. I am so grateful for the constant reminders in the activities in this church as to how to remain humble and keep working, keep leaning on God, learning what it takes to make God the only source of all my good. Thank you so much for the readings tonight and for all the testimonies and also the hymns. Thank you. Jim. Jim from Arizona, go ahead. Good evening. I am so grateful for Mrs. Eddy and her wisdom to provide us with watches. This is a very essential item, and it is so important that we consider this. Today, I go much of the afternoon to watching. And I am most grateful and most comfortable as a result of it. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff. Jeff from North Carolina, go ahead. Uh, good evening. I uh, had to rush across town to get, get on again, but I made it. And I'm very grateful for this church, Mary Baker Reddy, Christian Science, uh, God, of course and all that I'm learning here, uh, my daily um, phone calls to a practitioner if I need it, and uh, one uh, healing just recently or a change in my life, which has been truly good, has been my um, change in my position at work where I've been able to be put on full time. Now have to, not have to struggle so much for uh, to be able to just to get by. And uh, I've done this with uh, grace of God that that He would allow me to you know to overcome any difficulties that I would have to be able to to do this. And I'm uh, thanking everyone for their testimonies and and. Uh, I'm just so blessed. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mary, go ahead. From our uh, church website bulletin board, uh, the first from Maryland, I just finished reading, From His View, I Am Free Now, Ten Ways to Practice True Freedom by Florence Roberts, a practitioner in our church. I am grateful that it is available for all of us to read. 
I especially like the many vignettes she includes as examples. They are from her own life. Many of them I could easily relate to as they really hit home. I recommend this read. Thank you, Florence, for sharing your personal stories, your perspective on Mary Baker Eddy's Christian Science, and for writing this book. And then Florida. For many years, my husband and I have unsuccessfully searched for a Christian Science church to attend here, one wherein we could feel Mrs. Eddy's pure Christian Science expressed. Your online services fill that need for me now. Thank you all for the inspiration and gratitude that is always present in these services. You are doing a wonderful work. God bless you all for it. And then Iowa, Dear Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent, I can't say how much I'm grateful for Plainfield Church and all it is doing. I I tithe to the church because I believe in its mission, to the glory of God and to the advancement and the prayers of the cause, Mrs. Eddy's pure Christian science. May all mankind come to the warm embrace of divine love. I intend to get the internet in the future, and then I will be able to participate on the website again. Until then, I have the fantastic full text lesson sermons, the newsletter, Love is the Liberator magazine, etc. Thanks to the practitioners that stand by through thick and through thin. So much opportunity is coming into my life that I am so grateful for. And when I think of how it used to be when I would dream away the hours, here is my donation for this mission. Thank God and bless the Plainfield Christian Science Church. And then this one from Missouri. I also wish to add my sincerest thanks, my sincerest thank you to all of you who are involved with Plainfield. Although I have not met any of you to my knowledge, I feel like I know many of you as a result of the roundtables and other online services that I am now listening to daily. And your voices are a comforting and familiar presence. Thank you for your actions many years ago in the breaking away from the mainstream organization. Thank you for your website that is impeccably maintained and updated. Thank you for your daily email, the weekly Bible lesson, and weekly online services that allow all to participate wherever we may be in the world. Thank you for your archives and reading resources, including the quote unauthorized works, that have been provided, providing challenging yet necessary guidance. Thank you for using modern technology for its divine inspired purpose to reach and unite all earnest seekers of truth. Thank you to the practitioners, past and present, and each of you endeavoring to exemplify true Christian science, and for your love of God, the Christ principles, Mrs. Eddy, and, and all creation. Thank you for your constant consistency, your discipline, and your watchfulness. Thank you for your honesty and the need to handle animal magnetism and for removing the candy coating of its peril if we do not. Thank you for answering your call to duty and in turn calling others to join you, since even one with God is a majority. I do not limit the capabilities of this organization and the strength of its foundation, especially as it continues to grow in numbers and unity of thought. This contribution is given with the same spirit of love and gratitude. Again, I thank you all. Uh, Tonight we heard uh, a few people speaking of watches and watching. Since we have always have new people joining us, I'll just say briefly, Uh, A watch is the time in which we pray and uh, we work for the world. A watch is not usually a selfish thing, it's working for the world, uh, our church, our community, our nation, and our world. And we do unity watches, some in which we work together in unity, and others we do individual watching. And it's as when Jesus said, 
What I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Um, Mrs. Eddy attributed a lot of the success of the movement during her time to this watching that took place in her home uh, in the mornings, afternoons, evenings, and during the middle of the night. Uh, in our next newsletter, our October newsletter, um, Jim has compiled a list of watches that Mrs. Eddy has given to us, uh, very, very helpful ones, and we will be getting it soon, but I'm going to read just a couple of them that she has given us. One is, watch, no daily, there are no accidents, no disease, no age, and no death. And then another, all of these are things she's given us to do on a daily basis. Uh, watch, work every day to know that the belief of impossibility has no power over you. Know that it cannot possibly affect you in any way and never for an instance hinder your demonstration. Whether you are working for health, peace, joy, or any mental quality, thing, or experience, know that you are conscious of the possibility and realization of all that is good and true. Another, pray daily, twice, at least, to divine love to give you success. Then realize for yourself that love and truth and action on your part, for truth does not work for you unless you work, will give you the victory. Guard reversal. There is no law or of hypnotism to reverse God's law. Truth is unchangeable and cannot be reversed. These are wonderful watches, and when you think of it, if you're not thinking like this, you could be under the mortal law of accidents, disease, age, uh, the mortal laws of failure, or the mortal laws of impossibility. But we know under God's law, we don't have to have that. We have health, we have uh, abundant uh, youth, if you call it one way. We have uh, God's law that nothing is impossible to him. All of these things are available as we work this truth, as we watch our thinking, as we watch and pray. As it was brought out too in Janet's testimony when she was watching and seemed to have a problem, when she forgot about her problem and worked and prayed for the world, her problem left. Mrs. Eddy has said, in science and health, whatever holds human thought in line with unselfed love receives directly the divine power. As we work and pray unselfishly for the good of all, we are receiving directly God's divine power. And this heals and helps not only the world and all of mankind, but as she said, it blesses ourselves as well. I'm so grateful for this church and all that I'm learning here. Those were such good readings tonight and hymns and testimonies. Thank you all. Thank you.